What is up, you sexy YouTube mother lovers? I promise today's video is not satire, although it sounds like it probably should be. So I try not to do too many of these videos about random legal battles in the gun world. I personally don't think it's that engaging usually, but oh my God, I couldn't not tell you guys about this one. This lawsuit is quite possibly one of the most ridiculous things I have ever read. And I've read Twilight. Well, I told one of my high school girlfriends at some point that I read Twilight, but I, uh, no. So if you're out there, Sorry. But anyways, Daniel Defense, Sons of Liberty Gunworks, and a handful of other gun companies who've done absolutely nothing wrong are getting sued over memes. No, I'm not kidding. Anyhow, what started this whole thing is there was an attempted mass shooting in DC. I'm not going to name the shooter in this case because A, it's not relevant to the story, and B, fuck making those pieces of shit famous. But regardless, somebody who was almost certainly deprived of a father figure growing up went out to go try to end as much life as possible. And already, before any Europeans are in here like, oh, you Americans and your mass shootings, it's amazing any of you make it to adulthood. First off, half the statistics about American mass shootings are just straight up lies and manipulated data. Like half of the school shootings they count in the United States are basically some redneck in the parking lot with a hunting rifle ending into the concrete on accident, injuring nobody, but now it's a school shooting. But aside from that, rifle deaths, like not just scary guns like AR-15s, just rifles all across the board, all rifles, are like 350 people a year. So literally like a one in a million chance, which 350 is oddly close to the amount of people who are stabbed to death in the streets of the UK every year, even though their population is only like 20% the size of ours. Huh. Anyhow, thankfully in this instance, the shooter was all around shit at everything apparently and ended up killing zero people. Although four were injured, thankfully nothing life-threatening. Technically there was one death, the shooter ended up turning the gun on himself as soon as police showed up. Once again, the presence of a good guy with a gun ends the shooting threat immediately. Many such cases. Anyhow, homeboy sucks starts his own rifle as soon as the cops show up, apparently afraid of dealing with the consequences of his own actions. Which I mean, by this point he saved the American taxpayer a good bit of money by doing so, so I mean at least he got that part right. Fast forward, as you can imagine, after the shooting was over, police raided the home of the shooter. They found several other rifles in the shooter's possession, none of which were chosen for the shooting itself and were left at home. Remember that part. That's going to come in handy here in a sec. Let's now cut to one of the victims, a woman by the name of Miss Lowy. Now, obviously, it goes without saying what happened to her was awful. But what's also awful is that some attorney decided to take advantage of her and convince her to file one of the most ridiculous lawsuits I've ever read in my entire fucking life. So without further ado, let's go ahead and crack into the lawsuit itself. Who is it in this case that is getting sued? Well, buckle up because it's fucking everybody. Let's go through them together. And I'm sure if you're familiar with the gun industry, you're gonna recognize quite a few of these. Daniel Defense, Fab Defense, Fab Manufacturing, Bravo Company USA, Loyal 9 Manufacturing, Fostech, Hearing Protection LLC, Centurion Arms, Magpul Industries, Federal Cartridge Company, Vista Outdoors, Fiocchi of America. Fiocchi Munizioni, Munizioni, Jesus Christ, I'm an uncultured fuck. Starline Brass, Surefire, Torque Mag, and John Doe's 1 through 20, collectively, defendants. That is a huge chunk of the gun industry. Although there's one name that stuck out to me there because I didn't really recognize it. Loyal 9 Manufacturing. Who exactly is Loyal 9 Manufacturing? That's surely not a brand I've heard of. So as it turns out, Loyal 9 Manufacturing is the holding company, or rather DBA corporation, whatever, of Sons of Liberty Gunworks. Good friends of mine, and as AR guys go, you know, they're all right. But if you know your American history and you know anything about the Loyal 9, you'd know that they were a predecessor to the actual Sons of Liberty group in the American Revolution. Sons of Liberty Gunworks, we see you. It's pretty clever. Why are all of these companies being cited in this lawsuit? Well, as it turns out, the majority of them have one major thing in common. When it comes to the shooting, they weren't even there. No, I'm not being cute. I mean, their products were not even used in the shooting. Your Honor, shut the fuck up. You wasn't even there. But for real, these are companies that are now being sued because their products were used to harm other people, quote unquote, even though their products were nowhere near anything where people were actually being harmed. This is seriously like somebody getting in trouble for a drunk driving accident in a Kia Soul, and then Dodge and Toyota get sued because they had a Charger and a Tacoma in their fucking garage. As somebody who spent a little bit of time in college uh, studying law and preparing for law school, this, this lawsuit 
hurts my brain a little bit. But while pretty ridiculous, that's not even the best part of the lawsuit that's coming up. So let's explore some of the grievances this lawsuit had with these companies. But first, let's explore our sponsor, TacPack, also known as TacPack. I happen to have a wonderful box of TacPack items right here, including enhanced shooting goggles, ironic t-shirt, enhanced AR pistol grips, Radian Raptor charging handles, a dope ass ax that, holy shit, I can actually shave with that. Not gonna throw that one. Dope ass backpack and more. They also gave me this note. AK guy, AKA Senator, Congressman, House of Representatives, different things. AKA the realest BH, I'll take that one. Please enjoy this showcase of tack pack items we've sent previously. Also code AK guy will get folks a free tactical grab bag with worth 60 bucks when they subscribe to tack pack. The November tack pack plus has a value of $300 for just 139. P.S. The Tack Pack Christmas boxes are dope as fuck and almost sold out. Treat yourself. 190 gets you 350 in gear, plus box 290 gets you 530 in gear. We love your hair. Thank you. Sincerely, Tack Pack. Now let's get back into a shitty lawsuit. So let's go ahead and dive into this lawsuit. Why exactly did they believe that they can sue all of these gun companies even though they weren't even used in the shooting. Well, it's obviously because of their marketing practices. From using military style marketing to, and I'm not fucking kidding you, memes. These companies are getting sued because they made guns look cool and were funny. I want off of Mr. Bone's wild ride. Let's take a look at some of my favorites. Defendant Fioki has deployed similar imagery in marketing its ammunition on its Instagram, depicting use of its product from what appears to be the balcony of a home or office rather than at a shooting range or at a game hunting setting. We have a photo of an operator here shooting off of a balcony. You know, like a police setting or a SWAT setting or literally any operator ever. Don't know that many non-operators that are casually running a several thousand dollar military IR unit on the front of their rifles. So according to this lawsuit, you can't show people who run guns for a living running guns. It gets even better because the next uh, best complaint that I've picked out here is literally just them taking umbrage with a meme. Defendant Torque Mag posted advertisements mocking people who use shotguns instead of AR or AK rifles for home defense and promoting its high capacity magazine along with hashtags such as Big Igloo and hashtag Civil War to Electric Boogaloo that refer to the anti-government extremist Boogaloo movement. Of course, we have this meme here, AR owners, AK owners, people who use shotguns for home defense. I actually agree with the sentiment of that meme. Uh, AARs and AKs are obviously better choices for, for home defense. Un I will caveat that unless you live in an apartment complex. In that case, using full power rifle rounds, um, not very considerate to your neighbors. Yeah, who wouldn't want the extra ammunition and the lower recoil of like an AR-15 versus a 12 gauge shotgun? Not that shotguns are bad for home defense necessarily, but I mean, I know what I use. This is honestly the first time that I've ever reviewed an actual current legal suit and it's turned into a gun meme review on accident. It's only going to get worse. If you're not familiar with gun meme review, of course, that's a series we do on the channel, along with Curse Gun Images, Darwin Awards, our assassination series. We've got some really cool stuff coming up, including actually some RPG stuff fairly soon, which I know you guys are super down for. So if you want to see that, go ahead and subscribe down below. And if you're already subscribed, A, be sure to check to make sure you're still subscribed because YouTube does that weird thing where they randomly unsubscribe people. But go ahead and hit that notification bell. You know, you don't want to miss an upload. Here's one from Sons of Liberty Gunworks. If you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. If you teach a man to fish, you feed him for a life. If you give a man a Sons of Liberty Gunworks apocalypse gun and enough ammo, he can take all the fish he needs from the poor bastard who thought he only needed a fishing pole. It's getting a little weird out there. Mitsubishi. Sounds like a bad haiku. But yeah, they're using stuff that's obviously jokes. Like this is talking about the apocalypse. This is completely irrelevant in the context of a shooting. But they're trying to twist it to make it look like these gun companies are trying to advertise towards mass shootings, which is absolutely not the case. They're just advertising to, you know, people like us. And damn, does it work. Defendant Fioki's advertisements tell customers that the more guns and ammunition they have, the better off they'll be with hashtags like never too many, never too much, and buy it all. If you know how many guns you have, you don't have enough. I actually have a fucking problem with this meme. I don't know how many guns I have off the top of my head, and I still don't have enough. Low key though, it's really funny to see these like 10 year old boomer memes from Facebook ending up in a fucking legal brief. Here's one from Daniel Defense all the way back in 2019. Call of Duty Modern Warfare launched today. Anyone else had a chance to play it yet? The title screen pictured here features a Daniel Defense DDM4 V7S. 
Video games like Call of Duty give young men like the shooter the opportunity to simulate the experience of shooting at others in a theater of war, using AR-15 rifles. No shit, that's what we use. This lawsuit has now devolved to the point where they are picking on Daniel Defense for acknowledging the US military uses the AR-15 platform. They're also somehow failing to mention the tens of millions of Americans who have played Call of Duty and didn't end up becoming shooters. But no, they're trying to get money out of Daniel Defense for saying, hey, cool guys, look, our gun was in a video game. And yet somehow, it still gets worse. Daniel Defense also routinely promotes advertisements that blend its violent weaponry with well-known pop culture references to ensure its advertising is attractive to young men. Oh wow, what a terrible phrase. Attractive to young men is just a phrase that I don't think should, should be in any legal document. Pop culture references to ensure its advertising is attractive to young men who are particularly susceptible to these deceptive marketing practices. Have a spooky and safe Halloween. What did you dress up as? That's, that's not a pop culture reference. They're literally telling you to have a safe Halloween and did the most basic boilerplate corporate Halloween post you could, you could do. I'm beginning to believe that an unpaid intern wrote this entire brief. This includes posting an image of a Mark 18 AR-15 rifle with popular musician Post Malone, again with the hashtag gun porn hashtag to broaden its advertisement's reach. So that also begs an interesting question. Now we're mad at Post Malone. Why is he not mentioned in this lawsuit? Why are you not also suing Posty? Not that I think you should or should be able to, this entire lawsuit is fucking stupid. But if this whole thing is devolved into, you know, not talking about what people have actually done damage to you, like shooting, holding the shooter accountable, perfectly reasonable. That makes fucking sense. If this whole thing is devolved into just attacking the marketing departments of companies that weren't even involved, then why not try to sue Posty too? Totally also fucking stupid, not trying to give this moron ideas. Also, as far as modern music goes, Post Malone is one of my favorites, so yeah, don't fuck with Posty. But do you see what I'm getting at? Like how, how this is just a giant slippery slope? Now next up, the complaint they have again with Sons of Liberty Gunworks. They seem to be popular in this lawsuit. You can't complain about being shadow banned anymore. That'll get you sued. Defendant Sons of Liberty Gunworks went so far as to complain about Instagram removing its posts for coordinating harm or promoting crime, and for promoting the sale of illegal or regulated goods. I've known the guys at Sons of Liberty for a long time. They do not coordinate harm, and they do not sell illegal goods. The best part is if you actually read the post. Very confusing. Instagram removed this post, reviewed it, reposted it, then removed it again. I'm not sure if that counts as one violation or two, or if it even matters. I've noticed a trend over the last few years when high-profile gun topics are in the media cycle, our account and other accounts are throttled or removed. I have no doubt the upcoming verdict in a certain case is causing concern and shutting down anyone who might amplify that conversation is a real priority for them. So Sons of Liberty is literally just sitting here talking about being censored just for, you know, promoting gun content. Believe me, I can relate. This is mentioned here a few times, but somehow is twisted in the suit as to say, Defendant Sons of Liberty Gunworks cannot claim ignorance as to the entirely foreseeable impacts of its advertising when a platform that it uses to advertise has plainly informed Sons of Liberty Gunworks that its posts are dangerous. No, you fucking brainlet. They're saying that their posts are clearly within guidelines, which I firmly believe that they are, and that their posts are being taken out of context so they could be targeted politically which this lawsuit is fucking doing. It all just gets so fucking tiring. What doesn't get tiring is reminding you that if you ever wanted to get your start in gunsmithing and weapons technology, you can check out sdi.edu down in the comments. They're the main sponsor of the channel and we appreciate them very much. These next two though have to be some of my personal favorites. Sons of Liberty Gunworks has also incorporated misogynistic jokes into its promotion of illegal firearms activity. Base, 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 base. In 2022, as Canadian officials considered firearm restrictions, Sons of Liberty Gunworks posted an image reading, Her. I bet his search history is nothing but porn. His search history. How to send machine guns to Canada. And the caption, by the way, Good luck, brothers in the north. This is probably during the big, uh, you know, Canadian trucker fiasco, which was fucking rad. Following that up with another meme that they posted. In a reference to a possible modification to make a weapon fire as fully automatic, defendant Sons of Liberty Gunworks posted a picture of a lower receiver, which the shooter purchased from Sons of Liberty Gunworks brand, with the caption, hey girl, are you an 80% lower? Because I wanna drill your third hole and not tell anyone about you. I cannot condone that kind of humor. Is posting memes about this illegal? Absolutely not. Should you be able to be sued for it? No, of course, this is absolutely fucking absurd, but it is a little naughty. Something important that's actually uh, specified here, 
uh, a picture of a lower receiver, which the shooter purchased from Sons of Liberty Gunworks brand. Which, by the way, it's, it's, it's not in the photo. It's clearly an 80%. It's a whole fucking joke. It's not an actual lower. But they mentioned specifically that Sons of Liberty, uh, the, the shooter had apparently purchased at some point a lower from them with the lower receiver on an AR-15. At the end of the lawsuit, they had to specify every single piece of every single gun that was found and like from all of the people that are now defendants in this lawsuit. And uh, it's, it's a long list. Like, Daniel Defense had harmed Miss Lowry by selling an upper to somebody that was legally able to have one. But everything, Miss Lowry was harmed by, was harmed by. But these were weapons that weren't used in the fucking shooting. Even down to Surefire, because apparently in his safe they found Surefire magazines. Starline Brass is a brass company. They don't make guns, they don't make ammunition, they literally just make the brass casings, and they're being sued. This entire thing is completely ridiculous. When Joe Biden and the rest of those kooks always say like, oh, we need to hold the gun manufacturers accountable. Accountable for what? They're not doing anything. They're doing things that are completely legal. They're within the confines of the law. What we really ought to be doing is holding the perpetrators accountable. It's no mistake that all of these big blue cities that have the worst gun crime are also the softest on crime. But no, I'm sorry, that just, that, that implies you have to hold people accountable for the consequences of their own actions. No, let's go after the manufacturers instead. That makes a lot more sense. But here's where that political rant uh, turns into a call to action. I'm calling out the people like Daniel Defense, like Surefire. I would say Sons of Liberty, but I know the owners and they're very based and they're not gonna do this anyway. Do not fucking cave to this lawsuit. This lawsuit is an absolutely obvious money grab from a piece of shit attorney trying to take advantage of an actual victim. If any of the people in this lawsuit that I've named here in this video try to settle on this, hold them accountable because that sets such a bad precedent for the entire gun industry. This is a ridiculous case. It should have been immediately thrown out and it probably still will be. But if some big corporate company like Daniel Defense goes ahead and settles just to try to make it easier for themselves and put it behind them, this is gonna open the floodgates for more of this dumb shit to happen. So be sure to be keeping an eye out and be sure to tell these companies, stay strong, don't settle. We're all behind you because you did nothing wrong. And the future of the Second Amendment absolutely depends on this. Anyhow, that about sums up the lawsuit. If you want to read it for yourself, I'll go ahead and leave the links down in the description. There's a lot more instances of memes and things that I didn't mention in this video, and to be honest, it's kind of funny. I'm actually stoked for like the next month of content we have going, so be sure that you're subscribed, hit that notification icon. I appreciate you guys staying to the end, and as always, I will see you sexy YouTube mother lovers in the next video. Thanks. My obsession to make the perfect weapon Like us putting rise to the top But the killers you can stop your 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 stop your